Huh, no one's here yet, okay. No, oh, someone's here. All right. So this is Ask Me Anything slash Roundtable Discussion. So anything and everything goes, but, you know, still try to be respectful. You know. All right. Well, so, oh, someone was here and then someone dropped out. Well, hopefully whoever, <laughs> excuse me, whoever it is comes back. And I'm just going to say that um, when I was at McDonald's a little earlier, I could I could hear some kids talking about me in the background that I'm about me being the person that um, had a bit of a scuffle. Uh, what a week and a half ago, and I could hear someone say, "That's the guy. That's the guy." And like they're not that subtle. So but I was just I was just I just acted like I didn't hear them, you know. And they never bothered me. I never I never I didn't respond. I just did what. I did this when I was a social worker. It's called planned ignoring. If you just ignore people, they typically just leave you alone. <laughs> and they don't you don't get the reaction that they're looking for. So there you go. So hopefully someone joins a stream so I can we can make this a little interesting rather than me just talking to myself in the camera. <laughs> but you know, you you, you get if you're in my position, you get used to talking to a camera and you just, yeah, let it go. So, you know, oh yeah, I was gonna mention that um, I had the idea of, I'm gonna develop a master's class for theology, or sorry, yeah, the theology, apologetics. It's more a specified branch of theology, which is apologetics. And it's gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it divided up into three different groups. So it's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna create an entry level for apologetics a college class, which is intermediate, and then of course the university level, which is going to be advanced projects. So, so of course, the difference between the three will be well, language and verbiage, really. And so I'm going to, and, and so at the entry level, I'm just going to speak like you're, like I'm talking to you, like you're ten years old. I mean, in the sense that I'm going to make all of the words as simple as possible. Ah, Kim is here. Amazing. Rob, Rob Buddy, my man, what are you doing, bro? I am just uh, explaining something as an idea. I'm just fleshing it. I'm li literally fleshing out an idea that I have. Oh, yeah? Tell yeah. me about it, Rob. Tell me about it. Okay, I'll start from the top because I, ju I just started. So Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, thinking to develop in the, probably within the next like two to four weeks a master's class in apologetics. So entry level, college level, university level, or put another way, entry, intermediate, advanced. And the only thing that's going to be different from, from one stage to the next is verbiage and linguistics. So I'm going to start, I'm going to keep it simple for the, obviously for the entry level, I'm going to get a little tougher linguistically and uh, rhetorically for the intermediate. And at the advanced level, I'm just going to assume that I can talk to you like you're, a, I'm a college professor and you have to be able to pick up the rhetoric yourself. So you're you're gonna teach a class about apologetics? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I'm developing an apologetics uh, master class. It's gonna be online. This is gonna be strictly online. Okay. Okay. And then I'm gonna divide it by category. So the private class will be 25, but it's 25 Canadian, which will be eight. Well, for Americans is good because your your exchange rate is amazing. So it'll be 18.50 for an hour for for the, my American <laughs> friends. And then the the, uh, the monthly fee will be one fifty Canadian, which works out to one eleven U.S. And then it's going to be five hundred semester Canadian, which works out to three seventy American, and one thousand for the year, which works out to seven forty a year U.S. 
There you go. Now I'm finished. Wow, you're gonna charge money for this? Yeah, I'm gonna because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna invest a super amount of time <laughs> and effort. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna do all. I'm gonna I'm gonna develop the, I'm gonna develop the curriculum curriculum for it. <coughs> Can I ask where you uh, where you're getting all of this free time? Do you uh, do you, do you have like time off work or something? Yeah, I'm I, I'm got, I always off work for about two weeks. Um, just because of my my job situation was uh, on call. And they okay. said, and I and I try to get work for this week, but they said, oh, they have someone for this week. So they said, this. So it's going to be the week after this coming. So the fifteenth, the fifteenth, I'm going to be starting working again. So this is going to, this is going to be. I'm going to develop this all in my free time. What do you, uh, what do you do for work, Rob? I don't know that I've ever asked you that. Okay, well, I'm. I've been trying to get full time work, but it's been tough. But I've also been working here and there through temp agencies as much as I can get. So right now I am working through a temp agency. The the, the job that I'm I have starting the fifteenth of this month month Kim will be through a garage. Um, it's going to be like basically I'll be the grunt grunt guy at a shop. I'll just be lifting and moving tires from wherever they want. You put put them in storage, put them on the rack wherever. So I'm just going to be the grunt guy and I'll just do some like clean basic cleaning around the shop, a sweeping that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. I worked as a tire tech for a little bit at a high school. Yeah. That, 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 that job, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So yeah. That, 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 that's what I'm going to be. I'll be a tire yeah. tech. There you tire go. tech slash grunt boy, grunt guy. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'm. So uh, I'm curious about this master class. Um, go ahead. What are your uh, What are your qualifications, man? Where did you go to school for uh, divinity and theology? I went to un. I went to Redeemer University. I Redeemer. studied there for. Five let me look this up redeemer oh yeah you're googling okay, okay. it's an ancaster okay an ancaster, which is which is part of hamilton ontario canada okay you'll Let's see it i'm sure sure yeah i'm finding it okay yeah yeah private all right the reformed oh that's right because you're a reformed uh i forget what what specific um Reform, it's Dutch, I mean, it's, it started out as a Dutch reform school, but it's not really, it's, it has, it's definitely not Dutch reformed anymore, but that's, that was, that's how it started. Okay. Cool. Which is a pretty so you, uh, you majored in, you majored in what now? I majored in religion. I was, I was a English, I was a religion and, uh, and youth ministry major and an English minor. Okay. And uh, what do you have, like a, a master's? I had a BA from Redeemer. Redeemer okay. doesn't have a master's. Okay. Only okay. BA. It's a BA. It's a university. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So are you, are you doing this through like an academic institution? Or are you doing this like through your through your channel, through your social media? How are you, uh, how are you marketing this? Yeah. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop the curriculum um, – through um, the, all like the branches of that I've, I've been like, um, so a lot of my a lot of my apologetics it's kind of <laughs> it's part it's part academic training and it's also part self it's a lot it's a lot of it self taught too through just like watching de watching debates with <coughs> guys like Turek and William Lane Craig David Wood Nabil Qureshi. Um, yeah, some of those names ring a bell. I'm very familiar with some of them. Yeah, I mean William Lane Craig and Frank Turek are of course yeah. pretty well known in the in the realm of debate. Um, mm -hmm. David Wood is more so. I mean, David Wood's main thing is um, Muslims, but he will debate the odd atheist. But his main thing is is uh, Muslim. Okay. Okay. And then uh, Ravi Zacharias back in the day, but I don't I don't usually mention him anymore because of his uh, falling out of. Uh, his, do you know his stuff? Do you know anything about what I'm talking about? No, no, I don't recognize him. Okay, well, he was like he he was an, an internationally renowned apologist. That ba he's he, the, the thing about Ravi that I, I feel kind of uh, what's the word? Um, I have mixed feelings because he's honestly the guy that got me interested in apologetics, like probably 25, 30 years ago. Mm. 
And but the thing is, Ravi had a secret life of uh, sexual sin that got exposed like a few years before he died. Oh, drama, drama, drama. Yeah, so I like that. Yeah, don't you though? <laughs> oh yeah, drama. I love it, man. I, it's I, the greatest I, thing on earth. I, I honestly hate drama, man. <laughs> I I'm fueled by it. Okay, so, I, I, I despise I despise, I despise it. I despise it with a passion. But anyways, uh, well here's the thing. I, here's the thing I want to say about Ravi Kim. Sure. He was a brilliant apologist, and so I got. To, I'm going to separate his his personal life from his professional life because the work he did in apologetics was like amazing. And just because he had shit on the side doesn't mean the stuff he did it, it, for his work was was uh, dismissible. Mm. But I will do, I will say it does definitely um, it definitely does destroy credibility. I mean, if you want to look at it that way, I guess. Mm. I'm I'm a big fan of separating the art from the artist. So okay, so so you so you're you're okay with me? I can I can understand say, I can yeah. understand appreciating somebody's uh, academic achievements. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if if you might say, mm. uh, despite their questionable personal life, right? Yeah, their, uh, their contributions to the record of all things, as one might say, is oh, more okay. significant than their you yeah. know personal predilections. I don't know if you've heard of him, but it's possible. So I'm throw it. Have you heard of John Lennox? No, unfortunately. Okay. He has debated uh, Richard Dawkins. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a, a big fan of Dawkins. Yeah, I've heard a lot of um, these these days. It hurts. <laughs> he's just a little abrasive nowadays. Um, and yeah. uh, taking the the sort of affirmative position, I, I have the same problem with Hitchens. Mm. Uh, because they they do take that affirmative position in their in their not being a god, and I don't I don't feel comfortable with that. Mm. I feel okay. like that's a that's a silly that's a silly position to hold. So let me ask you this: what what well known atheist in the in the area arena public domain would you? I'm like? I'm a big fan of of uh, genetically modified skeptic on YouTube. I'm also a big fan of. Um, uh, Seth Andrews, Seth Andrews, oh, uh, okay, yeah, I know you know, OG sort of, I, you know, I grew up watching him. The other guy, um, I'm trying to, he completely rebranded cosmic skeptic. He was formerly known. Oh, Andrew, was, Andrew. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. He's brilliant. No. Yeah. Fantastic guy. I mean, I mean, I've seen him have a dialogue with Frank Turk on, on, um, a number at some time ago. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're talking like uh, formally educated, classically trained. Yeah, yeah. What do you what do you think about uh, Sam Harris? I have a I uh, Sam Harris. I don't know, man. He he's taken. So th this has more to do with his with his political positions than than his like. No, no. It was. I'm sorry. Maybe maybe let me let me let me. Um, My problem with Sam Harris is a political one. It's yeah, not necessarily yeah. Well, what, what do you think about Sam Harris just on the face of his his um just on the face of his um position for uh, um naturalism and atheism and, and that? Um, um, from the little that I've heard of it, like I said, I don't listen to a whole lot of his stuff. I know I know of him more than I know about him. Uh, yeah. I, I figure he's very sort of mainline, like naturalist. Like, there's no reason to believe in a god. Yeah. Uh, currently. Yeah. And I, I accept that as a as a fellow position, right? Yeah, yeah. That's all, that's what it's basically. Do 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 you align with him positionally on his? I don't his... know. I don't know that I align with anybody currently in the zeitgeist. I'm I'm specifically an apatheist. Uh, even if you okay. could prove that your god i mean even if you demonstrated your god i i believe that your god is fundamentally evil and i would not oh, worship okay. him okay i i understand i i totally yeah. understand yeah. and it's not like uh it's not like uh because i know i know a lot of uh apologists will accuse atheists of like being angry at god and and that's a different conversation uh, yeah, but it's not even an anger like position as far as the evil thing i just i'm not i'm not cool with what he does and what he's done and what he wants i'm just not cool with it Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, that apart from I'm I'm pretty I'm fairly confident that the that the Christian God doesn't exist, given mm -hmm. the history of Christianity, um, mm -hmm. and just sort of how it how it exists in the modern day. It's very different than the way that it arose in the 
conditions under which it arose, historically speaking. Yeah. Um, so I I'm just had a feeling you'd be joining me today. <laughs> What's that? I had a feeling you'd be if I sent you a DM that you'd uh, be on here just because you were we were we were on here about this time last time I said so I think you know what I bet if I shoot uh, Kem a DM he'll join me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I almost didn't. I was like, oh man, he's just hitting me up out of the blue. What do I do? Oh, oh. fuck it. I'll go talk to Ron. There you go. That's how. That's how conversate. That's how. You're not, a, you're not a bad guy, man. I just. I wish. I, I'm. Mm. I'm hoping to find the right words, the right combination of words to help you see. Okay. Yeah. So you know what? I, I was just gonna say something. What you said about like some of the best conversations happen with. Oh fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Honestly. Honestly, it does. Like it's, it's just some of the. That's. I mean, some some part of us just says, okay, let's you know. Let's just do it. Yeah. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah. And I think, and I, I, and I, but honestly, though, like, you know, it sounds a little glib, but honestly, I do believe that some of the best conversations in the planet happen with just that kind of, okay, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And especially from like being able to have a productive, with well, a semi productive conversation from across the aisle, right? Is always really. Yeah, exactly. uh, I, I do, I do. It bothers me a little bit how unwilling new atheists are to really engage with the other side of, on a human perspective, right? From a, from a human perspective. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's what I was trying to ask. Like, I asked an atheist, um, like dialogically through the, the, my Twitter page earlier or yesterday, I guess, because it's past midnight yeah. now. But I said he said it's he's, he. This is his. I'm just going to paraphrase them, but it's it, but the but I'm keeping the spirit of the, what he said. Okay. Yeah. So he said to paraphrase, um, it's brainwashing to teach kids one thing to the exclusion of all others. And I said, okay, so so I said, by your own standards, it would be brainwashing to teach kids macroevolution, naturalism, or any other kind of that well, that, that aligns with that uh, those two th those things to the exclusion of all others. And I just keep pressing him, and he just kept. He just basically ran himself into a. That's that's a really interesting point. So let me let me tackle that. Sure, go ahead. Sort of step by step, right? No, go ahead. It, I find it really interesting when creationists, right, or, or when religious folk hmm. talk about sort of how we're teaching atheism or we're teaching naturalism or we're teaching evolution as at the exclusion of other things, right? The well, naturalism. Cool. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because naturalism is not, it's not an ideology. Like it's not, it's not a. Um, I would agree. That's not an ideology. It's not like a. It's not a thing, right? So mm -hmm. when I when I talk about people who are atheists, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mentioned it in the in the original video that I did about you, uh, where I said it's not. It's an unaligned position, right? Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. it's not that I reject your God. It's that I've not currently taken any positions on the matter. The default position is the atheist position, ideally, right? Yeah. I understand that there are anti-theists who say there are no gods as a positive claim, right? Yeah, but anti-theism um, is religious. Anti-theism usually comes in the form in in the flavor of scientism, which I do is the one thing I will give creationists the 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 point on. Scientism is a real phenomenon that mm -hmm. happens with a certain kind of middle educated individual and what do you mean right? by middle educated um it's hard to explain i oh. i saw it a lot when i was living in southern california right so okay. but if you say things and i i don't i have, I have every right to question it yeah so the problem the problem lies in what and, and maybe this is different in Canada. I don't know what kind of school system you, you went to as a kid, right? But mm -hmm. when they teach us this stuff in school, they're not telling us what to think, right? Oh, right. So it's like my science, my, no, 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 no. My science classes were all conducted via experiments, right? So mm -hmm. they said, we're going to try to observe this phenomenon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is the procedure for how we observe this phenomenon. Take mm -hmm. measurements as you observe it, and demonstrate this process. And so they they walk us through the steps. You know, one one day it was measuring amplitude of waves across a surface of water, right? And and taking those measurements, 
we were able to see the physical phenomenon in motion, right? In action. Okay. And so we can, it's not that we're being told what to think about the world. We're seeing how the world works through experimentation, through observing it, right? Mm -hmm. So when when we present a, a classroom full of children with a fossil, right, we bring in like a dinosaur bone, you know, let's mm -hmm. say it's it's a femur off of a T-Rex or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And we bring it in and we show kids this is where we found it. Right. Um, here is how we were able to predict where we would find it, given the way that the continents have shifted over the last couple million years. Right. So since the extinction of the dinosaurs. Right. Sure. So this, these are these are Pangea's coastlines as we estimate them roughly to be, right? And mm. so we we did some calculations to see the tectonic plates drifting and where what other coastlines these bones would end up in, right? And so we went to those locations and we found this bone. And so we radiometrically dated it, and it's three hundred million years old. Right? And these aren't exact figures. This is for the sake of of example. We are not telling kids what to think. We're showing children how we go through the process of interpreting the things that we find and mm -hmm. the information that we use to predict where to find those things, okay. right? We're showing them the scientific method. We're showing them the systems that we can use in science to accurately explain and predict natural phenomena. And that's okay. the biggest, like the big key, right? We're not, we're not telling them what to think. We're just showing them the facts. Mm -hmm. We're showing them how to derive this information. I hear you. When, when creationists frame naturalism as this like explicitly ex like discrete worldview. I know. Requires I, was, you to I, was, I was just lumping it in. That's not, that's not how it works. So we're not, we're not teaching evolution to the exclusion of other ideas. We're teaching we're showing what the evidence has shown us. We're, we're taking you down the road of the evidence, the paper trail, right? Go ahead. Um, would, would, your, would, your, would your school um, be, was it, were they okay with kids who were religious or express religious idea and uh, as kids or just ask questions about it that ever happened? Or? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, in health class, we had, uh, there was a, before we were able to take the health class, second semester of junior year, um, we had to sign, we had to, we had to been given a waiver. It was, it was a piece of paper that if you took home and you got your parents to sign it, they could claim a religious exemption and they wouldn't have to go to health class. Right. So it was totally, mm, it happened a couple of times. There were, a, we, we had, we had some, there was a Jehovah's witness, uh, classmate who was, uh, who excluded themselves from that. And they, they had to sit out from like movie days as well, because they're not allowed to watch certain kinds of media. Um, but yeah. What would, what would, why would, I don't understand the, on the face of it, why people would want and need a religious exemption from health and fitness. Like there's nothing. That oh, can... oh, because health, health class in American high schools, at least in the public school system in California is mostly sex ed. And that's a very touchy subject with fundamentalist Christians in the United States. Okay. Well, I mean, the Bible talks about sex quite explicitly. So that's, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not arguing for or against it. Right. I'm just telling you, this okay, is no, 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 no. <laughs> people with yeah. religious, with like deeply held religious convictions are allowed to exempt, you know, their children from certain kinds of instruction. Right. But the, the basic stuff like hmm. earth sciences, math, well, just basic, re re basic um, um, biological reproduction. Like they would, they would want exception from that stuff even. Yeah. Kind of. Um, so again, it's a, it's a touchy subject. So some, it is some touchy, religious... I think, I think that, that kind of yeah. stuff makes me feel like Christians are giving me a bad name. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just it's a it's a carryover of the the Southern Baptist tradition. I guess, uh, and I guess some uh, other uh, fundamentalist Christians, communities, it's seen yeah. as a private family matter. So. Um, well, I, I think there's, I think what on the on to the extreme, like um, religion gone too far, has made people feel ashamed of sex, and I think that's not healthy. Um, uh, politely, respectfully, this is the pot calling the kettle black, but I will leave it at there. Um, a, a young Earth creationist pointing at a different kind of Christian and calling them an extremist is a little. No, I'm not calling I them didn't... an extremist. I'm I'm calling that particular kind of thinking um, extreme. 
extreme, an extreme yeah. interpretation of the bone. Yeah. I, okay. But, I guess yeah, I'm, I'm only talking about one issue, not every issue. Disorder. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. So, um, yeah, religious religious views aren't discriminated. We have a we have a, a which is something that you guys don't have, right? We have the freedom of religion enshrined in our constitution, and it, yeah, it, we, well, we, we 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 do have it enshrined in our constitution too. It's just that our law, I mean, our, our culture has shifted so drastically that it just Quebec it, has it, entered the chat. Quebec has entered the chat. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm messing with you. Quebec okay. would beg to differ, but okay. No, no. no, no hear, hear me out. In Canada, we in our constitution, we have like it's on pretty much well at the top: freedom of expression, freedom of religion, and um, and freedom of expression, freedom of religion, <laughs> and. There's another one, another freedom I can't remember. Yeah, about. but Anyways. all of these do have a public order exemption, I believe, as part. Yeah, of that's probably the, there's yeah. there, there's truth to that. So, but there's anyways, limits. and so in, in the United States, the limits are are far looser. Yeah. So where I was going with that is our, <laughs> our culture. Our culture has degenerated so far that it may as well be written on a piece of uh, paper in a trash can somewhere. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, so Laws are only as good as they're enforced. I'll say. I'll just leave it at that. Very true, very true, and very based of you to say that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so like, what is what is the specific concern that you have with, let's say, earth science education in schools? Because because well, talking about the fossil record, for instance, would be a part of uh, an earth science. Showing the geologic column would be a part mm -hmm. of an earth sciences course, right? And I know well, you you have like fundamental problems with those two concepts. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, what my my thing is like let's let's have kids have how about like we even have the option you can you can sign up for young earth creation you can sign up for macro evolution or you can sign up for both okay well but the purpose of a public education is to deliver the facts right so when we can take a photo because there are there are places on earth right where you can photograph the entire geologic column right or large where? sections of it where uh i know that they exist hold on let me Geologic column um, location. Geologic location. All right. Um, yeah, like in in the Grand Canyon, you can see major parts of the geologic column strata going back uh, several several layers, and so you see the kind the the kind of life that you find in there. Uh, oh, this is from a textbook. Hold on. Um. No, 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 no. That's uh, hold on. Taking my um, I can even I can see if I can oh, pull, pull an hour photo. And I got an hour and forty minutes left. We're good, Kim. Awesome, awesome. Because like the um, last time, last time I went in here, it, like it just drained my battery power. Like, yeah. Anyway, so like uh, we have taken samples, and there are places on Earth where you can see several of the different strata, and you can track you know, the, the age of certain rocks back uh, any number of millions of years, right? This is, this is established ge geology. The entire, as a matter of fact, we have such a good understanding of the geologic column that we can run the fossil fuel industry because the fossil fuel industry requires accurate geology to function, right? Because these oil deposits are so deep in the earth that you end up breaking apart million year old rocks. Right. It's just a normal, a normal part of the of the industry work. So when we deliver these facts to kids, like what is when we when we show the children how we radiometrically date a bone, for instance, mm. what is right. your specific? What would you change about that? Because we have to well, teach them the facts, right? Well, yeah, no, I don't dispute that. Um, I got to get I got to I got to I got to bring this up to my pastor when I see him um, later this morning. Is that yeah. um, he mentioned to me, are you familiar at all with McMaster University in Hamilton? Just like uh, as a name? McMaster University. University? Mm, yeah. No. It's actually one of the most renowned science um, universities in, in on, on, on um, as a university in, in the, in the planet. And it, it yeah. is public. It, it's, it's totally public. It's uh, like it's the Well, line. yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, but there, the thing is McMaster also has 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 a fair bit of branch because it's of its history in um, also religious thought as well. Uh huh. And so one of the, I mean, my pastor mentioned to me a, few, a couple weeks ago that the way that he said there's a, there's a, 
a scientist, a biologist, a young earth creationist at uh, McMaster who said that the way that this, I'm just quoting, okay? Sure. He said, he said that the way that they're reading radio, radiometric dating is faulty. And I don't remember how he, my pastor explained it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it to his attention again because I want to get the rhetoric right. So I'm Sure. I mean, radiometric dating is, again, this is, it's mm. not just like established geology. It's so solid and so well understood that several multi-billion dollar global industries rely on it. Oh, I don't just right. I don't Dave. I don't just I don't dispute that it's relied on for like the practical purpose that you're saying. I well the practical the practical purpose is the date the dating of rocks that are millions of years old in order to yeah, locate is, oil the deposits. Is, like, the thing is the age of the age of the rocks is 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 the age okay, maybe I'll ask this question. Is the age of the rocks important for how the mechanism works in the real world? Yes. We Why? need to accurate because we need to accurately locate oil deposits, and that requires yeah, knowing yeah, knowing think, what sections of rock are how old, because we understand the rate of decay of biologic material into petroleum products. Yeah, but do you, do you think that some like say uneducated Joe Blow on the street could just say, "Hey, man, I want you to go in there and I want you to start banging some rocks, when you tear it apart, in one hour do this, and and heat it to this." He did to this thing, and you can go over here and do this. Like, I'm not so sure. Someone, what, needs I'm, to... I'm not sure what your what your question is. Okay, well, okay, look, I, I'm not sure. I'm not so sure that we need to know the age of the rocks underneath the earth in order to make fossil fuel. No, we need to know the age of the rocks under the earth to know where the fossil fuels are located in yeah. order to dig them up. Because they're under the earth, Rob. Like they're they're oh. under the ground. Right. And in order to locate them, we need to know how dig to deep. Like this is a this is a normal part of the fossil fuel industry. But you any, can know any petroleum engineer can tell you this: that radiometric dating is a critical part of their job. But you and can of their see, industry. But you can probably figure out to some degree or another how to, where to dig and how how dig. This how is how you figure it out through the use of radiometric dating and tracking certain kinds of isotopes across large sections. Yeah, but you of can Earth. probably track isotopes without knowing the age of the thing you're finding and you can rub probably... rub we track them using their half lives we track them using the rate yeah, of radio you got to listen while i'm talking i'm doing i some... am listening to you and i'm no, answering you're... your i'm answering okay, your questions okay, but I'm, not even asking, I'm not even asking a question yet i'm i'm, I'm putting it out at ease <laughs> okay so let me try this again okay um please um wait till i'm finished sure talk. sure sure thank you okay appreciate that so my 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 proposition is they could probably okay I'm 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 not I'm not a technician, but I'm just I'm going to say I understand concepts. So just bear with me. You can correct it when I finish. Sure. Um, I, okay. So I well, however I'm not sure how people uh, what technology you, people use. Like I said, I'm not a technician, so again, feel free to correct me when I'm finished. But see from the on the face of it, well, however people whatever instruments people use to find wherever the hell the, the um, isotopes are to, do, to know where to dig. I'm, I'm of the impression that you probably don't need to infer millions of years about where it is, or sorry, the location of it is. You, you probably don't need to infer millions of years know that you need to dig about three to four to 500 or how many other feet it is under the first face of the surface in order to hit that thing. I mean, you can probably do a trial and error thing just as well and figured it. All right, I'm finished. Okay, so I'm 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 gonna say two things. Number one, I encourage you when you when you go to McMaster, I'm not sure what kind of faculty they might have there, but I encourage you to speak with a geologist, uh, mm -hmm. a chemical engineer, or a petroleum engineer if if you guys have a program for petroleum engineering, and uh, talk to them yeah. at, talk to them about how radiometric dating is used in the petroleum industry and they will be able to give you a more exact answer right because i'm i am not a subject matter expert nor am i so the the other thing is that trial and error is not really possible when you're building an offshore oil rig 
Okay. Oil rigs. Okay, are, well, I, I was hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me finish. Oil rigs are massively expensive mm -hmm. buildings that agree, have yeah. to be made in the, some of the rem most remote locations on Earth with the mm -hmm. most minimal amount of logistical support possible for any sort of construction that humans have ever done. Mm -hmm. Right, you're literally building a platform in the middle of the fucking ocean, bro. Yeah, it's say. it's super expensive. Trial mm -hmm. and error would make this kind of stuff prohibitively expensive. You need to know exactly where the oil deposit is before you drill, because yeah. if you hit, if you miss it, you're out billions of dollars. Yeah, the so, thing is. Um... This is this is an exact science as far as as as. Exact as science can get, as a matter of fact, geology is probably this, the most solid science there is. Hmm. Well, I was going to say, yeah, for the sake of um, trial and error, actually, I do see a fundamental problem with that, too. And that yeah. is uh, safety. You could, you, could, you could fucking kill yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this, this, this has to be based on, on solid, exact science. The numbers hmm. cannot lie, okay. right? Because well, otherwise you, you're out billions of dollars. So... Again, radiometric dating aside, right? When when we let's say let's say that you're standing next to a, a teacher in a classroom who is presenting the bone, what what do you want to say to the children as this bone is being presented? Yeah, you want to you want to present the facts. You want to present. You want to be. You want to be honest. Sure. But what is your what is your take on that bone? Is what I'm saying as a creationist. Like in what regard? Assume that you're standing in a in a in a in a classroom full of students, right? Yeah. I'm giving yeah. you the opportunity to present your point of view simultaneously as okay. we're having this discussion about this bone, right? So presume that I'm presenting about the bone, right? And I'm saying this is a Tyrannosaurus bone. Mm -hmm. We have radiometrically dated it to be 300 million years old. Here is the data that we collected. Yeah. Here is the machine. Here's how we located the bone, where we mm -hmm. expected it to be, where we found it, under what conditions it was found, mm -hmm. right? Rob, what do you have to say to the children about the bone? I'd probably say everything except the age. I could, I could still give details of, without the age. You could give details about Pangaea. No, I didn't say that. I could, but I mean, well, like, that's why well, that's what I'm saying. Like that's part of the process of locating the bone. Is we expected Tyrannosaurus Rex to live at at a time where the well, was, looked what, like this. It I, lived about here. What's that? What if I don't have the expectation that you have? Of where to find it. Okay, so how did you find it? That's a good question. <laughs> I would say, well, I would say, first of all, because it's my way I feel. I'm a teacher. I'd say, well, I haven't found it. Other people found it, but this is a bone, and you can. I could talk. We could talk about bone density. We could talk about structure. We could talk about curvature. We could talk about a lot of things. And ten, we could talk. We can infer try to infer tenants. We could infer structure. We could probably. To some degree, you could probably be able to build and for and build a model that would replicate its size to some degree or other. Okay. Okay. Um, so a child asks you, how old do you think the bone is? Because I sure. told them 300 million years and yeah. they want to know what not, you think. I do not know. Okay. Um, so then I go on maybe to the next section, which is about the skeleton that the bone belongs to, right? And so I can show, this is how we, we excavated the, the entire mm -hmm. skeleton, right? It was found in this position with these bones missing, which suggests mm -hmm. that it died uh, while defending itself from a different apex predator uh, mm -hmm. about 300 million years ago in this range of this forest, where we know that they were, they, um, they were very commonly found. This is sort of where, where Tyrannosaurus rex lived. We found a lot of different specimens here. This is this is how we this is how we know how it died. What is right. your what is your take on that? How, can you can you say the last part again? How how do you think it died? Yeah, so we found it in a particular position when when right. it was excavated, right? And that what position that given position? what's that? What was the position? But Rob, this is this is for the sake of example. I'm not a paleontologist. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, what what uh, position? Uh, it, it, the given the position and the number of bones missing in a particular section, we can mm -hmm. reasonably assume that this skeleton belonged to an animal that was being attacked and died after mm -hmm. being killed by another apex predator. 
right? Which is something that's very normal. Usually, the position of the of the of the skeletons, uh, other things in the ge in the same geologic strata can allow can give you enough information to infer how these animals could have died. Yeah, right? we use the and same thing with forensics right? today when we're when we're trying something. Exactly, like exactly. So when so when we we look at, for instance, um, fossils around the Chicks Club crater, right, in southern Mexico, we mm. can see the deposits of the soot right? Right okay. above where all of these skeletons are. So we can infer that this is a mass extinction event, right? Okay. Yeah, fair. I got you. So what, for instance, that's a, that's another good one. What, what do you have to say about mass, ex mass extinction events as part of the geologic column, where we find a bunch of soot and um, uh, torn up earth that has been pushed out of its layer? You're asking if to provide, provide and present my my position. Yeah. So I mean, I've shown this to the children. Let's presume. And how do you how do you explain that from your point of view? Well, from my point of view, the only thing I could uh, I could uh, I would be able to articulate and demonstrate to the best of my ability. And by demonstrating, mean induction and inference. Um, Noah's flood would be the best alternative to that explanation. When do you presume that that happened? I would say that happened four to 4,500 years ago. No, okay. no, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me, let me rephrase. Not four to 500. I would say six to 6,500 years ago. Okay. Based on the same evidence that I'm producing? Because what I've produced points to a mass extinction event caused by a meteorite. Right. And what I, so, and the way we know that, right, is when the when the rock hits, it tears up hmm. molten rock from lower strata and redistributes it around a, a certain area, yeah. right? And hmm. so the skeletons, the massive amount of skeletons, plus this geologically non-homogeneous section of rock that seems like it should have been from a lower layer, tells us that this is a meteorite impact event. And we can trace this down to the impact crater in Chicks Club, Mexico, or just outside Chicks Club, Mexico, right? Which, and this happened 300 million years ago, because okay, we've so, dated all of this rock to be 300 million years old. Okay, so so what I said again, going back to my mind, my my position would be that what we're talking about is an extinction level event. Six to sixty-five hundred years ago, that was caused, and, the, and the, what caused the mass extinction was a global flood from underneath the Earth and from above the Earth. So rain from above and below caused okay. a global mass extinction. How do you know that this happened sixty-five hundred years ago? Um, give or take, that's how the um, the Bible has been dated. That that happened about that time, given the uh, chronology of the Bible. Okay, so you're you're you are dating the rock based on what the Bible says. Correct. Not based on what the rock says. The rocks don't say anything. The rocks say a lot. Okay. The material composition of the rocks say a lot. When we put the rocks under a microscope, right, and we measure how much material, what what kinds of rock, what kinds of minerals are in the rock, mm -hmm. right? We can detect the presence of a of a certain amount of radiometric or sorry uh, radioactive isotopes, and we can detect their decay materials, and we can date the rock based on what's in it, and we mm. can show that it's materially different to different strata of rock. Right, older rock contained this composition, newer rocks contain this kind of composition, because this is these are our findings. Right, I understand. So we put this rock on the chart, and we can predict how old it is. And then we put it into a, a, a radiometric dating machine, which I don't I don't know what they're actually called, but it's neither here nor there, right? And it'll tell us specifically by measuring the exact amount of X isotope, right? I understand. But you okay. instead point to the Bible. Great. Yes, I do. So it, it doesn't bother you that our method of gaining information tells us more about the rock? It doesn't bother me because I don't think again I gotta talk to my pastor about what that earlier what we said I was said earlier but I it doesn't bother me because I think that the data is being read incorrectly. Okay, if I give you the machine and I teach you how to use it, right, and you do the experiment yourself, 
Mm -hmm. you're going to get the same result with the same rock. It doesn't matter who does it or how the data is collected because the data is always the same. Mm -hmm. You can do the experiment on the other side of the world with no interference and you're going to get the same, as long as you follow the procedure. Yeah, Kim, I get it. Kim, I get it. Well, but I mean, how is that, how does that not bother you? Well, I I have to withhold judgment. I need to talk to my pastor. So a lot of things that you think probably should bother me don't bother me. And a lot of things I think that should bother you don't bother you. So it's kind of a moot point. What you know what? I'll 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 bite. What do you think should bother me? I think it should bother you that you there's a creator that's judging the entire universe and you seem to be unaffected and, and totally oblivious to it. I think it should bother you that people's choices have eternal consequences. I think it should bother you that there's an absolute moral standard for life and the standard is God. I think it should bother you that animals are being tortured. I think it should bother you that that people are going against normal human common sense and biology in terms of the LGBT. And, and I think it should bother you that, that that children are being slaughtered in the womb in abortion. I think these things should, I think these things should, should should enrage you and it, that it doesn't is bog- mind boggling to me. And I think you're just willfully ignorant on so many of these things. Mm. Okay. Let me take the position of someone who knows with absolute certainty that your God exists, right? Mm. With that being the case, it would bother me. It would bother me that all of these things happen Mm -hmm. and that God lets it happen. It would bother me that there is so much suffering in the world Mm -hmm. and that God allows it to happen. Yeah, but I've been down this road many times, Ken. I understand that you have, right? Mm -hmm. But it does bother me. Okay. The fact that it, the claim of an omnibenevolent God allowing so much suffering, it, uh, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth, you know? The only being in the universe empowered to eliminate suffering completely, perfectly, eternally, and he chooses not to. Mm -hmm. He chooses to abandon his creation. No, he doesn't. Why why is there still suffering? Because we choose suffering. Why would would God allow us to choose suffering? That seems like such a cruel thing to do. Because he wants relationship, and a relationship can only happen if suffering is an, and evil is an option. Then maybe relationship is bad. Because if it requires suffering to exist... No, it doesn't want. require suffering to exist. It requires, it requires exposure to suffering, yeah, which, is exposure, bad yeah. Men, which is equally as, as bad as in my suffering mind. But suffering is an option. It's not, it, suffering is an option. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be an option. If you are, if I was ultimately and 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 supremely empowered, I'm certainly glad change, you're not. I I would eliminate suffering in a heartbeat. There is no yeah. reason for it to exist, yeah, and any any entity that requires it to exist is cruel and vindictive, and I don't want to worship such a thing. That's because I don't, you don't want to exalt such a thing. That's because I don't you want don't to exalt understand. anything that requires suffering to exist. He's not requiring suffering. But he doesn't get rid of it because it's necessary, right? It's necessary for the relation that he wants, which is selfish to condemn billions of life forms, trillions of life forms, because he wants relation. That's incredibly selfish, incredibly cruel. Valuing himself above everything else it's the height of arrogance. When he could have made a more perfect universe with more perfect relation and more perfect beings. 
And instead, he chose to make us sick and command us. No, he didn't make us sick. He made us perfect and gave us choice. No, we chose sickness. Now we're suffering. That's not making us perfect. Perfect would be capable of making bad decisions. Yes, he made us perfect with the capacity to choose bad. Yes, he did do that. Perfection necessarily requires the inability to choose bad outcomes. That's just your opinion. (laughs) Yes. And it's a that is that is a, a fundamental. Well, that's not very nice, Rob. That's a st- okay. I'm gonna. I'll explain what I mean by that. It's a stupid position for you to take because, okay, for for let me put it this way: for sure. you and, for you and I to have a relationship, it has to be built on the on the assumption that I have to be able to walk away from it. I have to be able to trust you, which means tr- just trust is an option. Fidelity is only an option if infidelity. Is enough. As fidelity only makes sense if infidelity is an option. I completely honesty only agree works with, with you. Dishonesty is an option. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Yeah. When that's between two beings of equal standing, but we are not on equal standing with God. God agree. is ultimately powerful. But strange. For an that ultimately you want powerful being, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You and I are not in control of the amount of suffering that exists in the world. And True. our relation is not dependent on the existence of suffering in the world. Agreed. But the relationship between humans and God is dependent on the existence of suffering in order to function. It is now. It didn't have to be. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I mean, here, here I'll give you three, uh, three uh, lines of reasoning for sure. what, what I'm going to say. First is, again, we chose suffering by rebellion. Rebellion and suffering are interconnected. We suffer because we rebel. So we have to deal with the consequences of our actions. For example, it's like saying, if, I, if I'm a father and I have a child, I say, hey, honey, um, that element is, just watch the stove. I just I just made some um, eggs, so this element's a bit hot. Um, so why, I'll just say, I'll just say stove top. Stove top is still hot. So I'm just watch the, just don't put your hand on it, and it'll be okay. Now, if I, after saying that, I go downstairs and I go about my business and I find out my kid, all of a sudden I hear my kid, my kid is screaming in pain. I come up there and I say, oh, daddy, I touched the element. I'm so sorry. I'm like, well, okay, yeah, I understand you're sorry, but now you know that there's consequences for the actions. If you, I've given you the choice. I told you what, hap- what would happen if you did it and you still did it. You're responsible for that, not me. In the same way, God did that in the beginning. He gave us all the, all, he gave us a, a perfect life. He gave us perfect morality, perfect everything. And all he said is, by the way, don't touch that one tree. Or sorry, don't don't eat from that one tree. Everything else is all, everything else is, is 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 yours for the taking. Just don't eat that from that one tree. You'll be fine. And then God went about his business, and we came in the garden, and we ate the tree. And now God came, comes back, hey, hey, did, then there's a conversation that happened and it was found out that we ate from the tree. And God's like, I told you everything else, yours for the taking. Just don't eat from that tree. I gave you the, I gave you everything, but you chose to eat from the tree. Now you got to pay for the consequences. Not my fault. I gave you the choice. And then now we're still dealing with the consequences of that choice. But the thing is, suffering is still is, is it exists because of that re- first rebellion, but suffering also exists because we choose to do more rebellion on top of rebellion. It's like we just can't help but continue to increase our stupidity and, and of of, de- of depravity, degeneracy, degeneracy, and ethics. And then and then God says, "I made a way for you guys in Jesus to reduce suffering." Maybe not eliminate it, but at least start reducing it and live with compassion, empathy, kindness, charity, hard work, sacrificial love. And these things reduce suffering in the world. Do they eliminate it? No. But they do reduce it. So we're dealing with the first thing. We're dealing with the second thing. We're just dealing with the third thing. And God has the plan in the future to destroy suffering once and for all. When he does that, I don't know, because the Bible says no one knows except 
God. So I'm, I'm, I'm not God, so I don't know when that day is coming. I just know that it's coming and that we need to be prepared for it. Rob, and that, Rob yeah. do you have kids? I do not. I, I, I really want to would eventually. Okay. Imagine, let's, let's use that kitchen analogy for a moment. Hmm. We can agree that you would love your child in that sense, right? Yes. In that in that position, and we agree that you don't want you don't want harm to come to your child, right? Of course, yeah. And you don't want your child to harm themselves, right? Of course Accidentally. Not. Oh yeah. Okay. And and we agree that a that a three year old doesn't understand what a stove is and doesn't necessarily understand why their parent is telling them not to touch it. They, yeah, they but only. I'm also using pointing and stuff too. So sure, yeah. sure, sure. But we understand that a three-year-old doesn't really have a have a complete understanding of why you're giving them the warning and doesn't have the the life experience to heed the warning, right? Agreed. Yeah. Sure. Now let's assume that instead of stepping out of the room, you remain in the kitchen and mm. observe the child without mm. doing anything. Okay. If you have the ability to see your child reaching for the stove. Mm. Where you know, as soon as the hand touches the stove, they'll get a very serious burn that'll require medical attention, right? Mm. Mm. Would you not intervene and prevent your child from putting their hand on the stove? In a heartbeat. Interesting. Did you make the stove? No. Where'd you get it? From Kenmore. Sure. So that means that you, you didn't make it. So no. you didn't design it. You don't no. know what goes into it. And you didn't get to decide how the stove functions, right? No, I just trust that it does. Sure. You could have pulled that stove out of your kitchen when you had a child and put in an induction stove, which wouldn't have burned anybody, right? It uses magnets. It's perfectly safe to touch even while on full blast. Okay, sure. But you didn't. No. You can't control the amount of danger that your child is around. No, I can't. You can only intervene to prevent your child from getting right. hurt. And sometimes Agreed. it requires preventing your child from doing things that it wants to do. Agreed. God is sitting in a fundamentally different position than you. Because yeah, I God, I God did design the stove. Mm -hmm. And God chose to walk out. Despite the fact that God is everywhere and can see and watch and observe everything. Mm -hmm. There is no point in time at which Adam and Eve were not within the presence of God. There is no point in time where God could not have intervened. Agreed. There is no point in time in which the snake was not being observed. Mm -hmm. The snake was allowed in. Yep. The tree didn't have to exist. God made it that way. He didn't need to make the fruit poisonous to us in that sense. He could mm -hmm. have made it perfectly healthy to eat, or he could have made it something else or not have made it at all. Mm -hmm. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is not a necessary component for reality. It didn't need to exist. God made it willfully, it knowing is. what it would do, knowing that ultimately his creation would fall to it, knowing mm -hmm. that the snake would successfully tempt them. God didn't need to wonder or guess at any of this. No, he, all of he, this happened at his direction. He is no. ultimately in control of all of reality. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, hold on. Wait, let wait, me finish. Wait. Let me finish, Rob. Let me finish. Yeah. I let you rant. Let yeah. me finish. Everything that happens in our universe happens because God wills it to happen under your worldview. Nothing happens that God doesn't want. Because if he didn't want it, he wouldn't put it in the plan. God made humans expressly capable of experiencing feelings of hatred and rebellion against him. He directed those feelings. He caused them to be by causing the minds in the, in the particular shape and form that they're in. God created all of this. God created us sick and has commanded us to be well. You don't see that as fundamentally cruel? You said you would intervene. Why doesn't God intervene? Does he not love us like you would love your child? Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, can, I, can I speak now? Sure. Okay. So a few things. Um, first of all, you're conflating what God wills to happen and what God allows to happen. 
Um, God allows a lot of things he doesn't will to happen or want to happen. But again, I'm, I'm going to point back to a fundamental um, principle that, strangely enough, in, in ways that I can't comprehend, because, well, I'm limited in my comprehension, um, that God wants relationship with us in the, to the same degree, actually to a larger degree, but in, more, in a more intense way, because he's God, he, he does everything with full intensity. Unlike us, we do things with a lot of mediocrity. But anyways, God wants relationship with us in the same way that we want relationship with other, at least on the face of it. So that much I understand. Now, again, for relationship to be a relationship, there has to be the option of out. And God gave us the option of out. So it doesn't make any sense to me that this is a hard thing for you to say that God allowed, God, everything that happened in the garden, did God know was going to happen? Yes. Did God make it happen? No. Did God will it to happen? No. Did God direct it? No. Did God allow it? Yes. Did so God make- prevent it? No. No. Okay, okay, Kim, let me finish. Um, yeah, God didn't prevent it, but there's a reason for that. Again, it's good. It's it got back to that fundamental principle of relationship. So in order for, again, for a relationship to be a relationship, there has to be the option of non-relationship or no relationship. It works, that works, that we see that in in uh, fam- familial relationship, we see that in uh, romantic relationships, with these, we see that in friendship relationships between men and women, men and, and men and men and, and women and women. And we see that in every, in, in every relationship across the world, the option of out and in, and the option of okay, if this, for this time, I'm gonna we're gonna step away and regroup. But and sometimes friendship g- gets a hold because people move. Like I was in Toronto for like four and a half to five years, and I wasn't in a relationship as much as people in Hamilton as I wanted to be because well, proximity and to them was an option. And I'm a transit user, so that makes things a little more difficult as well um, in terms of contact. So the relationship, the first thing. So, and that, but the relationship is fundamentally important to understand how God operates in the natural in the natural world. Second point: God allows evil to happen, but ultimately, it's He's allowing evil to happen. To one is God again one is eventually going to destroy it. Secondly, God allows evil to happen to to actually improve our character. And I'll flush it out a little bit later on. And third, God allows evil to happen so we can tell who's on which side. Now I'm going to flesh out my second point. God allows evil to happen to to improve our character. Now, so for example, if we we all need discipline, this is a fact of life. But the only way, sometimes we get disciplined through relationships. Sometimes people will act unsavory and God gives us a choice. Okay, you're going to act, you're going to return the unsavory attitude. Are you going to choose to ignore it? Are you going to choose to respond to it, but, but on, a, on a face value level? Are you going to choose to respond to it in a way that demonstrates maturity and wisdom, and not take it personally? Are you going to take it personally and get offended? Are you going to take it personally and get offended and curse them? And, and so basically, basically you've, you let that person take something from you. So God is trying to develop us through unsavory people more than we more than we're aware. Now, of course, God doesn't only put us in the face of unsavory people, otherwise we'd all be a, a fucking wreck. <laughs> but I mean, there, but God does allow unsavory people to cross our paths to test what we're made of. And God wants to continue, especially in the life of a believer. And this is not this is not easy for me. It's probably something the one of the hardest things I've had to learn is just. I mean, on the face of it, I sometimes I just have to tell myself, don't give a shit what this moron. I mean, I'm, I'm being like a little glib, but don't don't worry about what that person says. Don't worry about what he said. You don't have to justify yourself to him or her. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to give into this. You don't have to respond. 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 And many times I've learned the best response is nothing at all. Because if you don't say anything, it doesn't give people ammunition. Actually, a lot of times not responding deflates everything from happening in the first place that shouldn't happen. 
But most people don't understand that God uses that, or God uses the, the character of weak people to test strong people or increase the strength of already strong people. And I'm going to tell you, when I mean strong here, I mean strong in character. So people that are not easily angered, people that are not easily offended, people that can be cursed at unnaturally long periods of time and not give in to anger, not even respond to it, not even be effaced by it. And then these, these are the kinds of people that God uses to build the character of Christ in the, in the life of the Christian. Okay, the third point, I'm, I think I kind of lost it. Do you, can you tell me what my third point was? I, got, I forgot it. I don't know what your third point was, but I, I, have, a, I have a question for you. Sure, uh, sure. Why make weak people and strong people? Why not just make perfect people? Well, the thing is, like, and the thing is, the strong people are helping the weak people by realizing. No, 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 stop. Why yeah. make weak people and strong people? Why not just make perfect people? Well, he did. We choose to be one or the other. <laughs> okay. A perfect person doesn't mm -hmm. make bad decisions, right? Mm -hmm. A perfect yeah. person acts perfectly, right? But so no, a perfect person, hold on, a perfect person would be presented with the option to love God or mm -hmm. rebel against God. And mm -hmm. because they are perfect, they would choose to love God every single time because mm -hmm. that is the correct choice. So right. why make strong people and weak people? Why not just make perfect people who don't well, make he, bad decisions? Well, he made perfect people at the beginning and then perfect people became bad people. Okay, bad but perfect people, people cannot become not perfect because they're perfect, right? They don't make any bad decisions ever whatsoever. Oh, okay, okay. So you, you still have a fundamental, fundamental misunderstanding of what a perfect person is in this situation. Okay. How can a perfect person choose mm. the wrong option? By having, um, well, it's, it's again, it's, a, it's a fundamentally tied to relationship. No, 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 no. How can a perfect person make the wrong decision? If you are perfect, it means mm -hmm. you always make the right decision, right? Always, without mm -hmm. exception. Yep. So how does an in, how does a perfect person make an imperfect decision? Well, I guess there is one person that can answer that question. If you say Jesus. I'm saying Jesus. Okay, but you agree that humans were made perfect. Yes. In the Garden of Eden, humanity was perfect. Yes. How can perfect beings make the wrong decision? Because relationship requires the possibility. But he made us perfect. The possibility can exist. I will grant you that the possibility exists. But is he, if he made us perfect, then the choice cannot be made incorrectly. The perfect person chooses the right choice every single time. How can a perfect being make an imperfect choice? Because we were perfect morally, but we're still ignorant in many ways. If we're perfect morally, then we would understand how to make the perfect moral decision to love God every single time. Why didn't we? Because God was explaining things through the relationship of understanding. But he made but us perfect, which means we would have perfect understanding of that lesson, which means we would have made the right decision. Oh, we didn't have perfect understanding. But he we made us perfect, perfect, Rob, perfect in every way. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we wouldn't be perfect, right? There but would be perfection. It means a perfect mind that has perfect recollection of all inputs. Doesn't need to be omniscient, just needs to perfectly hear and perfectly understand everything that God says. So, so perfect doesn't need to be all knowing. No, not in this case. Perfect okay. and omniscient are different. Sure. Uh, a computer might, it might be said to have perfect memory, right? Because it is perfect recall. I put a file in a place and I can yeah. move the file and I can, I can pull the file and I, and I can copy the file and delete the file, right? The brain doesn't have perfect memory. But at the time of the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve did have perfect minds and perfect cognition I mean, I mean, and perfect made... senses, which means they heard and understood and obeyed God's, God's laws perfectly, right? Because they're perfect beings. So why yeah. did they choose to eat the apple? Um, curiosity, I think. Would perfect beings have curiosity that is capable of making wrong decisions? That would mean they're imperfect. In your, in your estimation. 
okay, in what estimation do perfect beings not make perfect decisions? With limited understanding. Well, they have perfect understanding of God's law, and that's the only thing that matters here, right? Yeah, but it's still limited. So then it's not perfect. Does limited mean unperfect? Yes. How so? If it's limited in some way, it is less than it could be, which means it is imperfect. It has imperfections. Well, then I think you're conflating imperfection with, with uh, knowledge again. What knowledge is necessary to follow God's law that Adam and Eve did not have? Yeah, they they they, they had they had they had it, they definitely had enough knowledge to follow God's law and know the process. Okay, so then how did they make an imperfect decision if they were perfect beings? Good. Fundamentally, it's tied to the principle of relation. Rob, the option is there, right? We yeah, can the, you and I can agree that the option has been presented. The option but if God presented. made them perfectly. They make the perfect choice when presented with that problem every single time, right? Because they're perfect beings. No, no, they don't. No? So they're imperfect. They had the option of being imperfect. Why? What? Hold on. What do you mean they had the option of being imperfect? You said they were perfect beings. They were created perfect. Yeah, they, are, they were perfect. That's Why true. would a perfect being choose to be imperfect? Because that perfect being was created with the option to choose out. Sure, sure. But why would a perfect being make the wrong choice? We agree that, that taking the out is the wrong choice, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, so how can a perfect being with perfect decision making make the wrong decision? I don't believe that they had the I don't believe that they they were at the level that you think they should have been at. But you said that they were perfect. I am describing you what this word means, right? I am telling you, you're telling me they're perfect. This is what yeah. perfect means. Yeah. So do you have a different definition of perfect? They were created perfect with a capacity. Okay. What is what does perfect mean to you? Perfect means pure. And perfect pure. means pure. For me, perfect means pure. Yeah. Pure. Okay. Do, does does decision making factor in? What is perfect decision making in your mind? Something that would align with God's logic, morality, and okay. Yeah, logic morality. Yeah. Okay. That, okay. So, logic. so human. So, so Adam and Eve were made with perfect decision making, right? Meaning that they aligned. They were completely and totally aligned with God's morality. Absolutely. Okay. What about God's morality would make them choose to eat from the from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? It wasn't about God's morality. Okay, but that's but that's the morality they're operating on. They are completely and perfectly aligned to God's morality. Okay, Ken, you gotta let me finish. Sure. Okay, so God created them perfectly with, with his own morality. That's true. Yes. So God gave them perfectly functioning be perfectly functioning minds. So they had they had perfect logic and perfect morality, but God okay. had also created them with a capacity, capacity for evil. Okay, okay, okay. But if they have perfect decision making, mm -hmm. they will never choose to rebel against him. Well, because they have they have perfect logic and they have perfect mm -hmm. decision making. So they'll well, never pick the wrong option. They will well, always know which wrong, which option is the correct option and take that option, right? Well, they have the capacity for evil, so clearly not. But they, just because they have the capacity doesn't mean they need to do it, and they can choose not to. I agree. But and they, they would because they're wise. perfect, right? A perfect being does not choose to be evil. A perfect being with a capacity evil has the option of... But, option. Doesn't, but never chooses it, never takes that opportunity. Well, unfortunately, because they're they perfect, right? Well, they they they, had, they they were perfect until they choose the option for evil. Yes, I understand this, but how does a perfect being make the wrong decision? Because the capacity for evil overtook their. No, own. no, 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 no. Yes, they have the capacity for evil, Rob. Yeah. But why would a perfect being decide to be evil? That's not perfection. That's the wrong choice. They, why they, would the, why would a perfect being make the wrong choice? This under, makes the fundamentally, Rob. This makes no sense. They they chose the wrong option. It's right in Genesis. If you want to read it, Ken. Yes, I know that they did, but why? Hey, Ken, Ken, Ken listen, listen, listen. Just just why? just listen. Just listen. If you just listen, this will take shorter. Okay, thank you. So, in Genesis, it says that they they saw that the tree looked pleasing to the eye and 
profitable for what? Knowledge and understanding. What do human beings, all, almost all human beings aspire for? An increase of knowledge and understanding. And it says in Genesis that the, the Adam and Eve saw that the tree was good and pleasing to the eye, so visually aesthetic, and profitable for under, knowledge and understanding, and they took it and they eat it. So why did they choose? Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 and profitable for knowledge and understanding. Yes, we've, you have already said this. Continue. Okay. And they took it and eat it. No, yes. that's, okay. the re that's the okay. reason, Kim, that they chose it because they thought it was profitable to increase their knowledge and understanding. But God told them not to. Agreed. And they have perfect decision making. And capacity. Why free. would they? The capacity. Because they wanted to increase people. their knowledge and understanding. It's no, really they're fast. perfect beings. Imperfect beings want to increase their knowledge. A perfect being has maximal knowledge. No, they didn't. Then they're not perfect. They had limited knowledge. And, it's, and, and even if they had limited knowledge, knowledge, they knew that God told them what that tree was. They should have been able to properly identify that tree if they had perfect senses oh, and perfect cognition perfect. and perfect recall of God's instructions. They, they are perfect them. beings. They had the recall wasn't the uh, option of the problem because that's obviously that's obviously eliminated in the decision making passage. was the problem because they erroneously decided to disobey God. Why would a perfect oh, yeah. being disobey God? Because they wanted to increase their knowledge and understanding. Why would a perfect being want for anything? They're perfect. Because they're perfect. They, they, they were created anything. with desires, Ken. They were created like um, autonomous robots. Why would a perfect being have desires? What could a perfect being that needs nothing How do desire you know for anything? That's the nothing. definition of perfect, meaning without nothing. It has everything it needs. It is perfect in every way. It has no blemishes. Yeah, it's it had perfect desires too at, the po at one point. What could a perfect being desire? It's relationship, perfect. intimacy, empathy. It gets all kindness. of that from God already. It already yeah, has all of that. And each other. And each yes. other. They have each perfect. Other and they have all of that. So what? Exactly. why would they decide to disobey God? They're perfect beings. Because they misunderstood something God was trying why? to do. Oh, hold on, hold on. How can a perfect being misunderstand something? Because they have limited knowledge. And they have capacity for evil. But they have perfect cognition and understanding. And perfect the decision for evil. With the, the capacity, capacity for evil. evil makes them misunderstand things, Rob? It gives the, it gives it, the option. If a perfect being cannot misunderstand anything, Rob. It's perfect. It <laughs> understands everything perfectly because it is a perfect being. Okay, let me let me let me put this way, Kevin. You and I are able you and I are able to use logic and dust and reference. Yes, whatever. but we are imperfect beings. We're talking yeah, about just, perfect just, beings. Still, still just 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 hear me out. Okay, you and I have the ability to use logic and reason and inference and rhetoric. And imperfectly, yes. Yeah, so you agree, imperfectly. Okay, but even perfectly, Adam and Eve were still able to use those same things perfectly with yes. the capacity for evil. But if they are perfect and they do so perfectly, they will always arrive at the right decision. Always, because it's perfect. I wish you were right, but unfortunately you're not. How does a perfect being arrive at the wrong answer? With, with the perfect capacity cognition? for evil. It doesn't matter if they're capable of evil, Rob. Just because they're capable of evil doesn't mean they have to be evil. I and a perfect being would not choose evil. I agree with the premise that having the capacity for evil doesn't it doesn't doesn't mean they have to choose evil. Yeah, a perfect but, being but would Kem, never Kem, choose Kem, evil. Let me because finish. a perfect Kem, being Kem, let me doesn't finish. want imperfect. Kem, let me finish. A, a, a moral agent with with who's perfect with the capacity of evil does have the uh, capacity to choose evil as well. The capacity for evil is an imperfection. Then, well, that's it true. causes it causes imperfect decision making. It causes imperfect inter, in, uh, inference of the world. It causes imperfect understanding of God's laws. I the capacity the for evil is an imperfection. I reject that premise. You can't, Rob. Of course, your, I can't. Your position, your your position breaks down if you do, because no, then you have perfect beings that can somehow can make imperfect mind. decisions. It's only in your mind that it's breaking down. <laughs>
And this is why I understand that Rob, atheists your position are fundamentally fun. your position fundamentally requires that perfect beings make imperfect decisions. And that logically is a is a contradiction, Rob. No, they have the capacity for it. You're conflating things again. You do this. If, yeah, just because they have the capacity for it doesn't mean they have to do it. And I've a perfect being you, would Kim, always perfectly to... arrive at the right decision. Cam, I've already Cam, I've already agree with you on that point, and I don't want to continue to go in circles with you. You don't agree with me. You disagree with me. You well, I mean, think I, that, I know, that perfect Kim, beings I, can make imperfect decisions. Yeah, because if they have the capacity for evil, they can. So then they're that. not perfect. The, the the capacity for evil is an imperfection that okay, causes Kim, imperfect Kim, decisions. Gonna, we're, going, we're going in circles here, man. We're not going to get anywhere with that. You've made your point. I've made my point. Whoever watches this understands both of our positions. I sure hope so. I think so. <sighs> breathe, brother. Just breathe. Uh, I'm sure Everything is going to be okay. <laughs> I sure hope so. I know so. How can you possibly know that, Rob? I'm just being facetious, brother. Oh, you got to mean what you say and say what you mean, Rob. Otherwise, people get oh, confused. Oh, that's pretty slick, Kim. I'll give you that. Say what you mean. <laughs> and mean what you say. Okay. Well, I mean, okay, I, I can't say that everything's going to work out just fine, but I think things likely will be okay. Hmm. Based on my observation of the past. Your observations of the past. Mm-hmm. When you observe the past, it's okay. But when we observe the past, now we have a problem. <laughs> now you're a category error. Again. Oh, you, the, the famous, the famous Rob Grun category error. I love it. I know, right? <laughs> That's okay. We're allowed to disagree. We're allowed to disagree. We're allowed yeah. to disagree. We're fellow human beings on Spaceship Earth, and we are allowed to disagree. And Kim, I just want to say, and I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, that I think you're a really chill guy. I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart when I say I think you're a chill guy. It's Thank unfortunate you. that we, we can't see eye to eye on this. I hope that someday that well, might be rectified. Okay. Um, no, but it would be nice. Oh, sure. I think I think that if, if most of humanity could come together and just sort of agree on what's in front of us, hmm. I think we'd be better off. Yeah, but I think there's a lot of things we do <laughs> that we that we never that we're not talking about in this conversation. Hmm. I agree with the Second Amendment. I think it's fucking awesome. Hey man, you ever want to come shooting? <laughs> Hell yeah! I've got some 3D printed stuff that I think you might like. Okay, well, I'm 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 currently in the okay. I'm just starting in the process of getting my passport, so maybe one oh. day. I'll just, oh. Dude, yeah, man. With the crossover, it has to happen. Damn straight it will. We're you, faded. We're if faded. you have one, come up here, and, and there's lots of shit I can. Take I probably from. could. I unfortunately, my financial my financial situation doesn't allow for it, but no, hopefully, no. at some point in the future. Yeah. Yes, I would love to. There I would are other Canadian would love to come down sometime and, and shoot shit with you, Ken. Yeah, it would be nice. It would be yeah. nice. See, we could get we could we could, we could yeah. work on all of our all of our problems on the prop and gun range. <laughs> oh, we'll see about that. I don't know. I don't know that we should get into a, into a heated discussion when there's guns around, Rob. That no, not I'm not going to a heated discussion. But I'm talking about getting our frustrations out through the the barrel. That's all. Okay, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah, so you see, see, so you feel, you feel a little bit like, uh, and then you, <laughs> you don't. Know oh, I know, it, I know exactly what you're saying, Rob. It's, I know exactly what you're saying. It's very. That's what I feel with martial arts, Ken. Is like, I like, I if I feel like frustrated or agitated online, I go, I can go to the dojo, and with an hour later, I'm like, mm. Mm. not really, but you know, facetiously. Fair enough. I feel like I feel like all of the, my frustrations have been left on the mat, and I'm, and I'm a free man. Yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a good. Uh, I've heard that exercise is really good about that. I get that feeling when I'm on the range. I just I'm able to center myself, but that's are because you, I'm a psychopath and I like guns. <laughs> are you home on the range, Kim? Uh, <laughs> very funny, Rob. Very funny. I couldn't resist. You, you, you walked <laughs> well, right I into it. I would have done the same thing. I done okay. The same thing. It's very funny. Very funny. I'm glad what I could else make do you we laugh. agree on, Rob? Let's talk. Let's talk politics. We've talked religion. Sure. Let's talk politics. What sure, else do we sure. agree on? 
Sure. Um, I can imagine we're both fiscal conservatives because I'm a libertarian, so that's kind of a necessary yeah, yeah. position. I'm, 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 so this is going to shock some of my Twitter folks. I'm fiscal conservative, but brace yourselves. I'm socially liberal. Oh, is that right? What yes, socially liberal positions do you have, Rob? Let's I, um, on healthcare, I think yeah, well, Canada, we have universal healthcare, and, I, and I'm totally, I'm totally on board with it. Hmm. I think the big problem with healthcare in my country is that uh, insurance companies are in bed with the state, mm -hmm. uh, and they're allowed to not have to compete across state lines. I really think if we if we fix that, and yeah. we brought back small private practices and mutual aid societies, uh, mm -hmm. we would probably be able to. We should have a multi layered healthcare system. Okay, right? okay. Because and one I, one size does not fit all. I agree. I think I'm agree. I'm I agree with that. But I just I think for like someone who's on the street who can't afford two cents to their well, name. Yeah. And I mean, we should have a public option, right? For, and that's yeah, what yeah. Medicaid is. For example, I don't think us, people right? should lose their mortgages because they can't afford a fucking knee operation. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so, so healthcare costs come from the, the failure of the healthcare industry to be competitive. So it's very stagnant. They, uh, yeah, they're, agree, they're, they I basically agree. run a cartel. Totally so you get, you get rid of that and you create more competition. Prices go down, right? We should have I'm a not. public option. We should bring back mutual aid societies for people. Who can't I'm totally afford, on board right? with your brother. Totally on board with you. Perfect. Perfect. Um, what else, what else is a, is a progressive position of yours? Um, I would or say a liberal I, position of yours. Um, I, I agree. I, I believe in the freedom of expression and the, in the arts university. So whatever the hell your ideology is, you should be able to talk whatever the fuck you want to talk. Okay, cool, cool. I'm down with that. I love freedom of speech. I'm yeah. a, I'm a bit of a free speech absolutist. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, do you I don't think, think I don't think you should be drowned out just because you have a contrary view. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, what else? Um, social, other socially, um, I am I'm okay with unions if they're useful. I'm pro collective bargaining. I'm anti union. I, okay, I don't like you know, you know, unions. Unions are I think it's better. Your, your, your thing is better than mine. Yeah. Pro collective bargaining, anti unions. I think the union structure causes a lot well, of problems. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why I qualified it with if they're useful. Yeah. 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 Certainly there are some, there are some, I, I, I'm definitely against public sector unions. I don't think the state should be allowed to organize right. against, um, also, uh, against the people. I mean, no, I swear conservative. I think that, um, People shouldn't be able to raise. I don't think government should be able to raise the taxes just to be able for the public. I'm I'm in favor of a flat value added tax instead of like the complicated income and corporate tax system. Mm. Oh, that's a that's a good point. Sticks Sticks is bringing up a good point. A social liberal would support gender and sexuality diversity. Do you uh, support? Okay, well, I mean, okay, that's what I mean. It has a cap. Okay? It has a cap. It has, it has a, a cap. This is a cap. Let's I mean, discuss the cap, Rob. What are, the cap what are has you to not... be my Christian values. <laughs> okay. Well, do your Christian values apply to everyone, Rob? Um, or do they well, only apply to members of your church? They apply to everyone who wants to apply them to. Okay. Do you do you support use of state power to enforce your Christian values? Fuck no. Okay. So then you you are you are you're a social libertarian at the very least, social liberal yeah. or a progressive at best. Yeah. Because as long as as long as you don't want to use the government to to enforce your Christian no, values on other people, no, I, that's I, fine. I to that end, I say fuck that shit. Okay, so you're you're not you're not like pro discrimination or anything, right? What do you mean by pro discrimination? Do you do you see gay people as like fundamentally inferior? Hell no. Are they are they like less of a person than you are? Do they should do they deserve fewer rights? No. Should they be able to adopt children? Should two gay men be able to adopt a child? Uh, that's tough. Um, well, that's a, that's a rights question, right? No, that's true. That's true. I'd say if there's no other option, okay. But I so preferential actually, treatment to straight couples. I, who are discriminating. I I that's t I I think it's healthier for for kids to grow up in hetero relationships. Sure. I mean, I mean, we can talk statistics all day, right? But I'm, I'm talking right. about policy prescriptions. Do, do you, would you use state power to disincentivize gay couples from adopting oh, children? No, no, no. I to would, make I it, would. to make it more no. difficult for gay couples to, to no, adopt I, children? I, I, I to give, no. to give heterosexual couples preferential no. treatment? No, no, I wouldn't use the government for that. No. Um, okay. Well, but that, I mean that's what we're talking about. So, okay, so okay. under so under your ideal state, right? Does yeah. do does a gay couple have the ability to 
to adopt a child with the same standard of of processing as every other couple. Yes, yes. They don't they don't encounter any hurdles whatsoever. I don't know. There is no decision made. Know. There's there's no decision made in your mind about whether it's best for the child. They're just. No, I don't. I I, I don't know. Do they get I, equal treatment as as far as all of that? I don't know. I I would imagine that gay couples gay sorry, gay couples can probably. Uh, adopt just as easy as hetero because the laws in Canada are pretty. Well, no, 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 no. But if you if you had the power to change the law to fit your ideology, right? Oh no, I wouldn't. No. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. So then, so then we're fine. Um, should openly gay people be able to run for government positions? Yes. Okay. So then, it's you. It's not that you would. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, should trans people have access to health care that would assist in a gender transition? At their own expense. Okay, so as uh, with as if with any other health care service, right? Mm, yeah, but that, but, but I would say... In, in Canada, at your own expense means you pay for it later in Texas. <laughs> no, me, I mean saying it not at my expense. Oh, okay, so it's an, elect, it's, an, it's an elective procedure then. Exactly. Should health, care, should health insurance companies be allowed to cover it? If they want if to, they want to. Okay, cool. So if it's if it's offered if it's offered under coverage, then it's fine. Sure. Right. Okay. It's fair enough. Um, not included in universal healthcare. Yeah, well, because Rob considers it to be an elective procedure, like plastic surgery, which I mean, essentially gender transitional surgeries are plastic surgery, yeah. um, but because they are they are being carried out in a psychiatric context, in some cases it is medically necessary, right, um, to assist with psychiatric treatment. Um, sure. if it is necessary to, to assist in psychiatric treatment and it is deemed medically necessary, are you okay with this, with a public option covering it? Yes. Okay. Well, that's fine. That's reasonable. That's a reasonable position. Um, e uh, yeah, I mean, I think if, if insurance companies want to, want to cover these and want to include these as part of their plans, they should absolutely. Um, if it's deemed medically necessary, I'm not I'm I'm not against it being a part of like uh, Medicaid or something. Uh, but if it's a if it's an elective procedure, right? Because um, not all not all of these cases are medically necessary. Um, a, a good portion of them are, and that's probably why we should have this conversation. Um, I think you and I are going to have similar positions, but just just to just to make sure, um, how do you feel about um, uh, trans psychiatric care for minors? Say that again. So, if a if a minor, uh, a child under the age of eighteen, presents symptoms of uh, of gender dysphoria as a as a medical condition, as a psychiatric condition, uh, what extent of care would you would you permit to be extended to that child? Well, I, I for that I would say I'm totally okay with tax funded psychiatric and professional care. Okay, would that include transitioning? Should a should a child who is deemed medically medically needing a transitional surgery be given a, a transitional how, how, surgery? How, how, at the why would a child case? need a transitional surgery? Let's say that under the circumstance, a psychiatrist deems it medically necessary to perform a transition surgery what, uh, as as a part of psychiatric care. Under what conditions would that happen? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's a hypothetical. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, under the under the under the guise of psychiatric treatment for a child presenting with gender dysphoria. I need then okay then then there's then then, then only I would say at your own expense. Sure. At well, but if school, but 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 if it's deemed medically necessary by a psychiatrist, like right, like then the psychiatrist should lose her license, as far as I'm concerned, because I, I can't see why that would be medically necessary in the right condition to prevent the death of the child. Why would the child die? Uh, because the child is under immense psychiatric stress that could induce suicidal ideations. Well, that is usually needs, the argument that's presented. Then, then, then he needs psychiatric help. Not, not, not. Right, not, but let's he, let's say that the, that the doctor decides, as a as a medical expert, that this is the best way to practice. He should lose his license. Okay, interesting. You don't you don't believe that there is any any situation in which a child can be medically in need of a gender transitional surgery? No, I do not. Okay, interesting. But adults can. Adults can need it medically, but children cannot. Oh, I think adults can make their own decisions. I don't think I think. Chuck, well, I think but I think we had previously agreed that if it was medically, if it was deemed medically necessary as a part of psychiatric treatment, then it should be it should be covered under the taxpayer. If a psychiatrist deems that somebody needs this surgery to live. Okay. 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 Sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay, but then not with children, though. Not with children. Okay. 
All right. Uh, I know that you, you are a pro-lifer for um, abortion. Um, you and I derive our theory of life very differently, probably. Mm -hmm. I define yeah. my, my definition of life has to do with my concept of property rights. That's how I ground my ethics. Yeah, I understand. Um, and I, so I think you and I agree basically in all conditions, except uh, some people certainly think that sticks. Um, I am generally, I am wary of abortion as contraception. I think it's just, there are, there are such reasonable, like condoms are available, man. It's, uh, it doesn't yes. seem, it doesn't seem ethical to, to use abortion as contraception. Um, I I think that if the child is uh, presents a, a bodily a bodily threat to the mother, it it can be treated as an individual, and it, it cannot make deadly threats. And so it, it has to be uh, the mother is allowed to to defend herself by removing the threat. Uh, and if it's a product of rape, it's essentially trespassing. So the mother has the right to evict. Um, that is not true, Sticks. There are I, I'm not saying that this is even a majority of people. I'm not even saying it's a plurality, but these people do exist. Yeah. Um, and I, and I think that we should definitely not embolden them. There are, there are sufficient legitimate use cases for abortion that we don't need to, we need, don't need to make it under all conditions. Yes. I agree. I don't think that it's nearly zero. It is, it is a significant, it is a statistically significant portion, but that's not the problem, right? The problem is that so long as there are legitimate uses, I'm safe, legal, rare, safe, legal, rare is essentially my position, hmm. right? I know that there are some cases where it's medically necessary. That's totally fine and legitimate. We can, we can, we have a theory. I can develop a theory of, of ethics to justify it. It's fine. Right. <laughs> but we don't, we don't need to be making. Well, probably, man, I live, I, I live primarily on the internet. This is how these things happen. <laughs> Again, I I, I'm, Sticks has been saying a lot of shit. So let me yeah. I don't, uh, I don't no, it's I don't not nearly, I see policy position. Okay, Kim, Kim, one sec, one sec. Sure. I would say that I've heard statistically that um, pregnancy as a result of rape, molestation, or abuse lies somewhere between 1% to 2%. Sure, but that's a legitimate use case for abortion. I, um, I see that I see that as a as a as a like fundamental property rights issue. So the, the fetus is trespassing because it is it is the product of a trespasser. Uh, mm -hmm. So the fetus can be evicted. That's I all. Would say, I would say my my only stipulation for abortion is if the mother's life is is mortally in danger. Yeah, same. I mean, again, medically necessary or as a product of a crime. I don't. I disagree with the latter, but I'm with you in the former. So you you think you think a, a woman should be forced to carry her rapist's baby? I think we should uh, leave the child alone and go fuck and go uh, shoot the father at the expense of the mother. I don't think it's the mother's fault or the child's fault. Let's go after but the she, father. Go after the perpetrator. Sure, 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 sure. But the mother, the mother is forced to carry that unwanted child. The child is okay, it's nine rape. months. So I mean, I mean, as traumatic as it is, let's not let's not make let's not make. Yeah, traumatic. let's not make it any worse. Let's allow the exactly. mother to evict so the let, child. So, anyways, we agree to disagree. Let's move on. Uh, no, I think you can prove a rape sticks. I think there, there are, there are okay, a yeah, plethora of ways that we. It's going to go in circles, and I'm not. Interested. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just answering what, what he's saying. Uh, next, oh, okay. next issue. Is there anything else that we might potentially disagree on politically? Um, let's say small government, big government. I'm, I'm, fa I'm in favor of small government. I'm in favor of a problem. minimal government. Very, right? uh, I'm in favor of a minimal government. The smallest oh, yeah, so possible much, so size much. of government. Yeah, leave people the fuck alone. Leave people the fuck alone. Exactly. I'm a minarchist. <laughs> um, let's see. Are you are you pro technology or are you anti technology? Would you consider you yourself mean, a transhumanist? Why? What the hell is that? A transhumanist is somebody who believes that that uh, humanity should use technology to enhance the human experience. So, like, would you be okay? Would you? Do, is it morally wrong in your mind to use techno to embed technology into the human body to make it better? Um, like, if you could. Is like, it a, 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 no, just hard. Kim, 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 what's the, one second. Yeah. Okay, so are we talking about improving the quality of life or fucking with people? Whatever it is that the individual wants to do with their body. If they want to replace their heart or their eyes or their lungs or their legs, should people be allowed to what do that? And on an individual basis, whatever the individual wants to do, yeah. fine with it. Cool. Do you think that we should strive towards 
uh, towards a more uh, a, a world where technology is more embedded into the human experience? Um, I think it's a slippery slope. Towards what? Terminator. I don't know. Ah, Skynet. <laughs> AI. Yeah, I yeah. see where you're getting that. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So are you are you skeptical of AI? Very. Mm. I mean, as you should be. I think that's the that's the most rational position is to be kind of mm -hmm. skeptical of it. Well, I think it has lots of legitimate uses and we can definitely do a lot of cool things with it. But we should be very careful as we tread. I mean, I mean, obviously, I mean, like Terminator is obviously a science fiction movie, but I mean, I think there's enough sci-fi to give enough like reasoned arguments that AI is something that we should be wary of. We should be very careful not to build the basilisk. You are exactly correct. Yeah, I mean, let's not let's not build the bastards. They're going to fuck us over and kill us. Yes, and yes, yes, yes. Let's see what else. Fundamentally, we're we're both. How how pro gun are you? Oh, 100 percent. Recreational nukes. <laughs> what the hell is it? I've never heard that term before. Should should citizens be uh, be allowed to own nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction? If they're if they're in the if if everyone anyone opens a, owns a fucking nuke, they should at least pass the fucking psych test. Who gets to administer the psych test? We'll say at people with credentials like Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson. Oh boy. I'm just saying someone with credentials, and that's the first person that came. Well, out. I don't know that he has credentials anymore. I think he had all of his licenses stripped when the when okay, the well, okay, whatever. I'm just happen. saying people, people, people with papers. At least you have to have some fucking interesting psychological psychology degree. So there should be some regulation. There should be yeah, some you, gun control. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, okay. So I'm, I'm not going to hand out a fucking I'm not cool on on street. I think you should be able to walk into your local Walmart or whatever you have in Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, buy your very own nuke or your very own uh, vial of uh, nerve agent VX. <laughs> I, if the government is allowed to threaten you with it, you should be yeah. able to threaten the government. Okay, back. is the government threatening your country with it? The government threatens everyone with nukes every day because they exist and they they have them in silos and they they have okay. Stay, okay. they have stated on multiple occasions that they are not afraid to use them. Okay, so I think. It I think if you if you have if you're level headed and I'm and Kim is I think that if I I think I should be but I mean again because we're talking about fucking nukes we gotta have some sort of standard. No, I don't think so. Okay, well I mean you should at least be able to say at least tell the person why you want it. No, I, I explicitly I would rather give my local homeless people nukes than the government. I oh, would same. more readily trust homeless people. Okay, okay, okay. okay. You know, uh, you, you've changed my mind. I'm on board. Give me the fucking nuke. Fuck yeah. Let's go, dude. Let's <laughs> fucking go. <laughs> LAC. Based Rob. Based Rob, yeah. dude. Hold so, on. No, but I mean, like, Rob, I, Rob, I, I'm Rob, not. Rob, I'm, Rob, Rob, Rob. Are you in favor of 3D printing firearms at home? Yes. Should, can you, can you, uh, can you say to the camera, print guns? Print guns. It's not working. Yeah, bro. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Let's fucking go, dude. Yeah. Um, okay. Amazing. Yeah. I do believe, like, you know, if someone steps on my property uninvited, I should be able to do whatever the fuck I want and because they're trespassing. Lying? Lying about what? What am I lying about? No, no, listen, you're, I, I, you're I'm you're, talking to Sticks. What am I lying about, Sticks? Oh, Sticks is accusing you. Okay, sorry, I didn't know you were talking No, 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 not you, Rob, not you, Rob. I, what am I Ken, lying why about? are you lying? I was on your side earlier. What do you mean? Yeah, let's bring his... Ah, uh, here we're we not, go. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're, not we're, we're talking about opinions, man. These are our opinions. Yes. I mean, we, yeah, we mostly sticks. have the correct opinions over okay, here. Okay, Sticks, sticks your, your question has been put up to the... The uh, microphone. The government does the yeah. The government threatens. The government has a monopoly on force. Oh, yeah, okay. they do. That's what the police are. The police are an implicit threat of force. Yeah, they're implicit. an explicit threat of force, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. It sticks as so is the military when yeah. it is leveled so, against the people. Here, here's here's the thing that, and I understand this. Um, the, the reason the sec and a lot of Americans don't even know this, but I know this. That the second create amendment was created so the government so the people would have the the ability to withstand government um, dictatorship and tyranny. Yeah. yeah. So the, the second amendment just says we should be able to arm ourselves to overthrow the government should the government go too far. Exactly. Based Rob. Based Rob. Oh my God. 
We're so back, boys. We're so back. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. anyways, suffice to it's say not, that we're not all lost, boys. We can we can save him. We can fix him. Yeah. I can fix him. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Rob. I love you. You're great. Yeah, a cab, a cab. Unironically, a cab. Yeah. Yeah. So, Real. Real. so, so, so for everyone who says that you know, because in Canada we're we're fucking pacifists, um, unfortunately. Yeah, um, it kind of sucks. It does. I mean, I'm not a pacifist, obviously. Which like is that. weird because in World War II, you guys committed a shit ton of war crimes, bro. Oh, okay. You, you. I'll let you take this one, Kim. I'm putting it up on the screen. You, you can, you can, you can talk to sticks on this one. Oh my god. <laughs> you know? Let me, let me draw you a picture. Okay. Imagine the house you live in. Yeah. Right. The pilot that is flying the drone lives right next door to you, dude. <laughs> Fighter jets and tanks cannot guard street corners. Look into look into the the Marines' yeah. occupation of the Dominican Republic. Okay. Uh, the I entire the only... entire hold on hold on the entire U.S. military apparatus was stopped dead in its tracks in Vietnam by a bunch of rice farmers with shitty AKs. Do not That's talk true. to me about whether or not the government can yeah. kill us, bro. They are not going to nuke New York. They're not going to nuke Los Angeles. Those are their economic hubs. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're, They're gonna not going to destroy, destroy the fucking sticks. bread basket. That's where the food comes from. They're going to destroy the sticks. Okay. They're not going to destroy anything, bro. It, it you, you fundamentally don't understand how warfare works in the modern world. Right? This right here is the dumbest fucking thing I've seen all day. All right. All right. All right. Let's be nice. Let's be nice. <laughs> okay. We are threatening okay. you. The monopoly okay. of force is an explicit threat, dude. Yeah, and the is, laws is, are threats. That is, what, is if you do okay, not me, do this or if you do this, we will punish you. It's a threat. Okay, let me rephrase. This is this is the most <laughs> ignorant thing I've seen all day, and all. Day. It's not. It's just. It's 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 a it's a problem with how uh, our generation was brought up and the kind of media that we've been exposed to. We aren't. We aren't. We are taught to be. Um, to, to see the government as this like thing that controls our lives and decides how um see, this again. You, don't, you don't have to bro you don't have to you don't yeah, have to this is a fundamental it's, misunderstanding you know, of you know what happens you know what happens when the president declares martial law and marches <laughs> the, it orders the marine corps to march onto fucking new york city half of the marines defect immediately oh, yeah. it's not going to happen because it's anti-constitutional nobody, nobody is going to bomb their own neighborhoods bro nobody yeah. wants nobody wants kill nobody wants to kill their own countrymen that's insane okay it's this again this is a fundamental misunderstanding of the argument by yeah, mis- fundamental misunderstanding yeah so the government threatens you with force every single day that's what laws are yes. you should be allowed to threaten the government back when it violates your rights no, he, when it he, tries he, to violate your rights, your oh, natural oh, human rights. I want to respond to something Ken, Ken said very something very insightful and 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 true that um, if when the when the government um, declares martial law, about half the half the Marines uh, um, defect, and the reason for that is the 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 people in the armed services, whether Marines, Navy, whatever. Um, their first priority is to defend the Constitution, not some fucking president. Hold on. I see. I think I see where, where the disconnect is. Sticks. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Let me clarify. As an individual, the government does threaten you as an individual, right? Because you individually cannot take on your entire local police no. department, right? Well, Collectively, you know, however, the entirety of the U.S. population, right? Can can easily most, take certainly government. less than less than a less than three percent of all people would be necessary because the government is is a very small collection of people right but Agreed. individually yes they do threaten you because a, a, a small yeah. number of cops can individually harass one or two citizens right but when the whole town rallies against the department it's a different story right right okay i, I think i got i got seven minutes kim so i, I got yeah, it take it easy yeah have a good night it's, yeah, it's good gonna... to see you good to talk to you Hey, see, we're, we're we're we agree on a lot of things. We do. We certainly do. Based Rob, based Rob is pro gun rights. Let's fucking go, dude. Pro, <laughs> pro recreational nukes. Let's fucking go. Yeah, I, I I've honestly never heard that term before. I'm radicalizing you. This is amazing. 
I'm getting radicalized on the internet. Yes. <laughs> Who saw that coming? Yes, yes. Good night, Rob. Have a good one, man. You too, man.